Welcome to another SBR Productions video. Make Rail Sexy Again is about shifting the way we think about urban design in India. In part one, we discuss the impending crises our cities face if current car ownership trends continue. There's a link in the description if you haven't watched it yet. This video is about how people-centric urban design will help avert the carpocalypse. The basic criteria any metro needs to meet are consistent reliability, safety, cleanliness, and punctuality. The modern Delhi metro with 213 kilometers of track, 160 stations, and a direct airport link is a good blueprint for other cities to follow. And they're following. Here in green are cities where metros are already operational. Cities in yellow have metros under construction, and blue cities have projects in various development stages. The success of a metro depends on a commuter's ability to access a station near home and near work. This is known as first and last mile connectivity. Since a majority of us don't own cars and use non-motorized transport, pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure should be our top priority. Let's visit three cities around the world and see how they encourage non-motorized travel. To enhance walkability, the Spanish city of Barcelona created superblocks. You take nine square city blocks and you close off the inside to through traffic, so any vehicles that are trying to get from one part of town to the next have to drive around the perimeter. Inside the super block, you wind up with street space for markets and outdoor games and events. In Indian cities, super blocks can be created by identifying areas where a car has more than one path to reach a destination. The American city of Chicago created a network of roads underneath the central business district to carry car and large vehicle traffic while enhancing the city's appearance and walkability. Chicago's famous Millennium Park, home to the Bean, was built above existing and still operational parking lots and railway tracks. The former mayor of Chicago, Richard Daley, he looked down from his dentist's office in this high-rise building and he said, you know, that's really ugly, we should have a park there. Shifting roads underground and building over railway lines reclaims space for people. Amsterdam in the Netherlands is a world leader in bicycle infrastructure and many of their ideas can be incorporated in India. Here are a few. Giving cycle tracks a uniform color that's different from the road surface cars drive on. Placing protective medians between cycles and car traffic and designing junctions which allow cars, bicycles, and pedestrians to all cross safely. These ideas we just described involve repurposing land, which avoids the complex and expensive process of land acquisition. So, how are we going to pay for all this? Raising passenger fares has always been unpopular, so historically the freight transportation profits have subsidized passenger travel. This practice meant there was very little left over to expand freight capacity, and the railways lost market share to the roads. Now the railways are looking to boost non-fare revenue. The Indian railways control prime real estate across the nation, and they plan to lease it to private developers who can transform the space into iconic multi-purpose destinations. Here are some of the proposed designs for the railway stations. Now that's how you make rail sexy. On the cost side, renewable energy to power the network will cut electricity costs, while network electrification will reduce their fossil fuel bill. Another method of raising revenue for public transit development is to end the invisible subsidies on cars. Subsidy number one, parking. Very rarely do cars and trucks pay for parking on city streets even though they occupy space that pedestrians and cyclists need. Paid parking zones, strict rules and better enforcement can end this subsidy. Subsidy 2. Congestion. In areas with limited space, congestion charges, like the one implemented in London, can ensure car owners pay for using the scarce space in city centers. Time-based tolling, which increases toll rates during peak traffic periods, increase the cost of driving when demand is high. The third subsidy is car's environmental impact. Pollution costs the nation between 3 to 8% of our GDP due to serious health consequences. 
a carbon tax based on mileage and fuel efficiency will ensure those that cause pollution pay for it. To sum up, we looked at how to repurpose public spaces, how the railways plan to raise funding, and how to end invisible subsidies which only benefit car owners at the expense of everyone else. Make Rail Sexy Again is about empowering the common man who today dodges cars and trucks as they walk and fears getting hit as they ride their bike. Thank you for watching this SPR Productions video. In part 3, we'll be discussing future technologies and how India can leapfrog the rest of the world.